Now let's talk about the third type of effects we have available to us in EOS, the relative effect. To create a new effect again, I'm going to double tap the effect editor. It's going to open up my last used effect. and I'm going to create a new effect, effect 803. And it's going to bring up this prompt. And notice that I don't actually have relative effect here as an option. I have step based, absolute, focus, linear, and color. Focus, linear, and color are all actually considered relative effects because they work relative to wherever the light currently is. I'm going to start by creating a linear effect, and it opens up this graph for me. Let's learn how to read this graph. We have intensity over time with time on the x-axis and intensity on the y-axis. That center line right here, time, this is where the light currently is. So for example, if the light is at 50%, that line right in the middle that says time is representative of 50%. So if we were to read this graph, we would actually see that as we move forward, the light would start at 50% and we would move forward in time. So read the graph from left to right. So we're going to start at 50%. The light is going to increase in intensity as it moves up towards the top of the graph. Halfway through the effect, it's going to come back to our baseline or to 50%. And then it is going to go down towards the bottom of the graph and touch the bottom of the graph here, about three quarters of the way through the effect. And then it's going to come back to our baseline. So right now we have this light that is going from 50%, it is increasing, then it is decreasing back to its background state of, in this case, 50%. It is dipping below that center line, and then it is coming back to that center line or that baseline of 50%. Now the distance between this center line here and the top of the graph is what scale represents here on the right hand side. What's really nice about the EOS effects engine is that these boxes here on the right hand side are shared between all three types of effects. So scale represents the center value to the top. So how long does it take to do this? It takes my cycle time, which is five seconds. So the left to right distance of this graph is equivalent to my cycle time. So we're going to go back in alive. I'm going to grab my backlight group, 95. I'm going to set them at 50%. And now I am going to run that effect. So select last, effect, 803, enter. We can see here in the live table that these lights are going from 50% to 75%, down to 25%, and then back to 50%. When we read it here in the live table, it actually looks like these lights are going from 25 to 75 to 25 to 75. But what they're actually doing is they are following this curve here. So if we want these lights, instead of going from 25 to 75, to go from zero to full, I could just increase my scale to 50. And now we can see that these lights fade down to zero, fade up to full, fade down to zero, fade up to full. So if we wanted to affect this scale, let's say we wanted these lights to go between 20 and 80, right, I would just make this 30%. Because 50 plus 30 is 80, and then 50 minus 30 is 20. So now these lights are moving between 20 and 80%. Now what makes this really unique is that I can then grab these lights and I can send them to a different value. Let's say instead of 50, these lights are at 40. Well now these lights are going to go between 10% and 70% because they are acting relative to wherever the lights currently are. So this baseline changes from 50 to 40 as I change the background value of these lights from 50 to 40. And of course cycle time here affects the rate at which this is moving. So if I come and I change the cycle time to 3 seconds, the chase is just going to speed up and it's going to go above and below that line in 3 seconds instead of in 5 seconds.